welcome to Coach Big's channel. Watch this. Ah, she hates this. What you doing? Ah! No! He does this to me all the time. Give me my mail. What are no. you talking about? Oh. I'm going to tell you that right there. That is pleasure at the highest level. I like to watch her we'll go struggle up the hill and then I run after her. <laughs> now you're funny. He's funny. So if you're asking why I do that, well, that is a good question. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, look. RCP, mother of the bride. Oh, that's great. Show our address to the world. Oh, okay. huh. Now we've been doxxed. Okay. Oh, they're coming on in. So Coach Vic. Uh-oh. What I wanted to do was show something. Now, that is about as emotional as I can get her, right? She's just not a very emotional person, unless she catches me in her chocolate candies. Then she can get somewhat emotional. Or That's, if he falls in the shower. Yeah, she'll, she'll laugh hard if I get hurt. I often say this, when I die and Coach Big goes up to my casket, she's gonna put her hand on the side of the casket and go. I will not, finally. <laughs> Coach Vic, you were in a car accident in 1989. What happened to you? A car accident. <laughs> I got paralyzed. No, we've had this discussion before, and I want to share this for people that may or may not understand this sort of thing. Coach Vic, why don't you cry anymore? I don't know. I'm, I'm not a crier. I don't know. I just feel like it's hard to cry sometimes. I, mean, I do cry sometimes, but I just feel like it's hard to cry. I guess the emotions kind of like, poop, take it out. I guess because life's been so hard that it's hard to cry. Process is taking its toll on me. It's just hard to cry. Try to cry. So as a paralyzed person out there, did this have that effect on you? And I'm gonna ask even a harder question right now. Coach Vic, after you got hurt, did you cry so much initially that you cried all your tears out? Or did you just quit crying like the day of the wreck? You just said, boop, I'm done. I ain't crying no more. I've had moments of crying, but it's funny you ask because you're throwing me off guard here. I, I cried some. I just remember one time crying in particular when all the doctors come do their Monday morning rounds for all the new doctors and they want to talk about you know how the patients are. They're talking about maybe you know, she's a T-seven paraplegic female blah 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 and I just put the cover on my head and just started crying in front of like 10 people but I hid myself and I remember that was a nice hard cry. I've had hard cries in the shower or alone but um, in front of people <clears throat> very rarely very rarely, if any, I can't recall crying hardly at all for the people. Is that a good or is that a bad thing? I don't know. I know the psychologists back then would tell me, well, you're going to let it out one day. One day you're just going to explode and go crazy if you don't let it all out and talk about it. So I did talk about it some in rehab, but not a lot because I didn't like talking about it because all these psychologists would make an appointment, tell me your feelings. After one or two of those sessions, I used to go hide in the rehab in the rehab facilities, they wouldn't find me because I didn't like talking about my feelings. So what, you go hide behind a drink machine and burn a doobie, hippie? Uh-huh, <laughs> actually I would go hide. I'd hide in the bathroom or something so they couldn't find me, but I didn't like doing it. Let's have music therapy so we, you can express your feelings. So no, but I was told you need to let them out, but honestly, through all of these 31 years, I've never really gone crazy to, um, I've never really been on a downer. I never went through any of that because I just don't want to do that. I don't I don't have time for that. And I don't, plus I don't want to get drunk and high all the time. And I don't have time to lay in bed all the time and just, I like to get out and do things. So what you're telling me here is that something in you, the day of that accident, forced you into the ability to control your emotions. So you now have control over your emotions. Say better than me, is that, is that what you're saying? Um. Maybe. I'm trying to remember before I got hurt if I cried a lot. Well, yeah, I did cry a lot before I got hurt. I cried a lot. I remember being on the first job, um, first get-togethers with at parties or just things like that. I would be feeling, I felt so alone, I would just cry. It was ridiculous. So do I feel like I have more self-control? I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it, I just feel like it's blocked or I don't know how. Okay, so Coach Vic, you've got self-control. We know that. Uh, we know you're not a crier. Uh, and, and honestly, Coach Vic is kind of like this. She's flat. You know, she doesn't, she, she, when she laughs, she laughs hard. And when she cries, she actually cries. It's rare. She normally laughs when I fall and get hurt or when something like that happens. If I, you know, if I come inside the kitchen bleeding, that is like a comedy show. Or when I fall and get hurt. Me and my twin sister, twin sister were in Damascus and we fell, she pushed me over uphill on a speed bump and, we, and I fell. 
And I'm down there, I'm dying, laughing for whatever reason. I'm just laughing. And I find out I broke my ankle. But anyway, so I do laugh. Here's my question then. Do you think that maybe your feelings have been numbed a little bit? Like, like almost a shot of Novocaine. I feel like probably sometimes I do want to cry. Like when my father-in-law passed away, I cry, but not like I thought I should. Or my dog just passed away here recently, I cry, but not like I thought I should. I got diagnosed with breast cancer and the doctor told me, I just laughed. <laughs> wow, here we go. It was hard to find that. It's hard to pull that. It's just hard to find that, I guess. So years ago, Coach Vic and I were uh, at the doctor and she was diagnosed with bladder cancer for the second time. And the prognosis, we'll just say, sounded a little less than optimistic. And for those of you who follow the Coach Bob 3 channel, which is mine and Coach Vic's channel, but primarily uh, is around us traveling and our adventures, one of the things that, that we were told was, you might not make it. And huh. she, uh, it was funny, so so my first wife, like I said, if you've watched uh, the other channel, you know that my first wife died of cancer. So I'm thinking, man, this is this is bad. I've been here before. Um, I was pretty upset. So we were driving home and I was tearing up. And of course, I'm trying to get some sort of, I'm, I, I, I'm just questioning what, what's going on. How do you feel? I'm fine. What do you want to do? I'm like, and I was tearing up and I'm like, I don't know what to do. And she looked at me and she goes, Bob, you know what? I've experienced more than I ever thought I would experience. I'm okay with it. What do you want to have for lunch? Yeah. <laughs> Coach Vic, how in the world? Now, I've seen you go through some stuff. I've seen trimalial fracture of her ankle, all three bones just broken, man. Foot all cockeyed. I've seen <laughs> pressure sores. I've seen a carpal tunnel surgery where you couldn't use your hand for weeks. Um, I've seen c-section i've seen all every possible burn that you could have she's burned it twice somehow you just seem to come through the other side not laughing not crying i'm going to use this word metaphorically just standing strong huh so you tell me i like i said earlier i just get up and i live my life the best i can each day um i do like to laugh i mean i laugh sometimes but crying you know crying is i do like to hide it now, Coach Bob got me on the spur of the moment here, talking about crying and feelings, and it's kind of weird for me. But I, I do cry, so don't think I don't cry. But I remember one of my biggest cries, you know, it was way back in college when I had a pet, ra a pet raccoon, and, I, and it, it got out of the cage, and it bit somebody. And long story short, I had to put it down, and I think I, that was probably one of the hardest cries I ever had. One of the things that we've talked about in our lives that when we were dating and stuff. Like I said, I was a widower and Vic was paralyzed. And so our, our life um, was different than most people's, you know? Um, we had experienced some real tragedy in our lives, both of us in different ways. Coach Vic obviously uh, more physically manifested and mine certainly emotionally, I guess, to a certain degree, however, however all that works out. I'm certainly no psycho, I'm, I'm a psycho, I'm just not a psychologist. <laughs> I'm halfway there. Yeah, you could be a psychologist. That was a, that was a joke right oh, there. You see the it. laughing? I missed it. Well, I'm just looking at you saying you could probably be a psychologist because you like to talk and analyze. He's very analytical. So one of the ways that we described our lives back then when we would have conversations is our life was like this ocean of happiness, right? And when you initially have something traumatically happen, there's like this drop of bitterness in your ocean, right? And that drop of bitterness as when you put anything in the water like that, when you first drop it in there, you know it's really dark in that real tight spot. But as time goes by and that dark ink just spreads through the water, it becomes thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner to where you can almost not see it at all, but it's always there. And it affects everything that you do in one way or another. It does affect the decisions you make and how you respond. Coach Vic, do you think that maybe that has anything to do with it? Hold that while I kill this wasp. Don't get stung, because I might have to laugh if I don't cry. <laughs> I guess I don't want my ocean really dark, so I keep keep on keeping on. Try to find the good and everything. Try to find the positive and everything. Just let those moments go away. Are you telling me that you uh, abide by that old song? Eliminate the negative, accentuate the positive? Sure, who sings that? 
it's an old song. Okay. I don't know. It's probably like a Jimmy Durandy or something. Sure, that sounds like that sounds like it. I, I guess the one thing I wanted to let people know, especially folks that are injured, I know this is Coach Vic's channel, but Coach Vic has asked me to help her to open up a little bit because she doesn't she she doesn't feel comfortable a lot of times just throwing it out there. She's not quite sure what to say, and she feels like if I pull the teeth, that uh, they might he's be extracted that. a little bit. Plus, he's my security blanket. <laughs> See, girls, he's my security blanket. Do you have a good life? Yeah, I have a very good life. I have a wonderful husband. I'd like to meet him someday. <laughs> but each. Um, I raised my kids. Like I said earlier, I wanted to be a wife and a mom, so done that. And we go out and do things together. We spend time together alone with friends, going out. Right now, COVID's kind of crazy, but yeah, I have a great life. I have no complaints. I really have no complaints. Oh, wait. Oh, you're in a wheelchair. Well, you know, I just forgot about that. <laughs> I don't have any complaints. My life, you know, is good. I want you to know that this is not just directed at wheelchair folks. That's the one thing that Coach Vic uh, wanted to make abundantly clear. For the moment, Coach Vic, if there are people dealing with emotions, now other than, look, if you're dealing with real emotional problems, you do need to seek help. We are not psychiatrists, psychologists, therapists. We're right. none of that. We're simply people who have seen trauma and want to love on you a little bit. So Coach Vic, if you had any words of wisdom or love to just offer to anyone. I would just say, as a paralyzed person, as hard as it is to get out of bed in the morning, because that is the hardest part of my day. It's always been my hardest part, but after being paralyzed, it's really the hardest part of my day because of the struggle of getting up and to get in that chair. It's not like I'm thinking about the chair. It's just the, the physical part of getting up and getting in the chair. Once I'm up, the day's gone, but if you can just get up, even if you're like, I want to lay here all day long and be depressed, or life is horrible, you have to get up and get out of bed. Even if you are depressed and life is horrible? Especially if your life is hard, and if your life is horrible, and if you're depressed. You have to get out of bed. And then make the bed, or get your first cup of coffee, or whatever it is you like to drink in the morning, um, or whatever your vice is. You, you got to get up and get moving. I was just telling all our our swimmers today, because I'm a swim coach, I told them today, even if you feel like you're having a bad day or just being lazy and you kind of feel, oh, I need to get up and do something, my, my advice is um, jumping jacks. I always tell them to do jumping jacks. Go do 20 jumping jacks or go walk around your block or do 20 or do 10 planks. Do something to move your body because you're going to feel better because I'm a, I think, moving, I think athletics. Or, um, but you got to get out of bed and, and find you a hobby. You just have to, just, you gotta get up and start your day. So you were a runner and you're told you can't run. You had drawn a lot of your happiness from your physical activity. Now, all of a sudden, one day that's ripped away like a Band-Aid, tearing a scab right off, right? And you yep. were upset because you were healing up, man. And it was going good. Now, all of a sudden, things are sucking pretty bad. Yeah. So you're going, I don't want to go out there. I don't feel like pushing my wheelchair around the block and this stupid looking turtle shell thing they got on me. And, yeah. I, and I'm wearing these stupid little white pantyhose looking things so I won't get the very gross veins and blood clots and all that stuff. I don't want to do it. I want to lay in bed. This is not fair. What do you say to that? Well, when I first got hurt, when I woke up from the hospital, they asked me, can you move your toes? And Can you feel this? Can you move your feet? I'm like, no. And they said, okay, well, you're paralyzed. I said, oh. I said, and I thought I said this, I don't know if tubes are in my mouth or what, but I either thought it or said it or mumbled it, I don't know. I said, well, if I can't run, I'll wheelchair race. And I remember that very, I, re I remember that very well. And so I got home and within a, within a month of being home in my turtle shell, I'm out there pushing around my block. So my neighborhood back then was either, it was in half mile increments. So I was up to half mile to three miles just pushing around the neighborhood because it was just in me. And yeah, I felt silly, you know, I felt silly pushing the big old, cause they gave me a chair too big. I felt silly pushing the chair, but I just had to move. Got into wheelchair racing. Do you think the fact that you will take your frustrations out in the physical world, do you think maybe that helps you not be so down that you're not crying all the time? Definitely, if it wasn't for exercise, I don't know where I would be just lifting weights. I don't care if they're two pounds, 10 pounds, 20 pounds. I don't care if I'm not even using weights, if I'm dancing. If I just can go around the block here in my, in right now in my neighborhood, 
or up and down the driveway, chasing, going around circles in the house with, with a dog. I have to do something almost every day because I know if I don't do something, it, I have to do it for my brain. So remember folks, there's a lot more when you break your back, there's a lot more that gets broken than just that. And yeah, there's a little bit right here. I've seen this beautiful woman go through a whole lot and I love her and she's awesome. Yeah, I feel a little bit right here was taken away when I got hurt. A little bit of joy, but you know what? There's still 99% more joy left in there. So you have to just live with what you have. If you've been hurt recently, focus on the 99% joy. Not the 1% pain. Exactly. Because you focus on the pain. It becomes the 99%. You will become that. And like I said, from our trip we just went on, from Tallahassee to San Diego, you can if you try and you can't if you cry. And we ain't crying or I'm not crying. I, you know, so. And I'm gonna tell you right there, I believe that that little phrase that Coach Vic came up with paints the true picture of why she doesn't cry. She believes crying and being an emotional train wreck all the time is a stumbling block for her life. Yeah, they used to, yeah exactly. See, he should be the psychologist. <laughs> I'm just a psycho. You are a psycho psychologist. <laughs> So, and it's free. Well, anyway, Coach Bob surprised me on this moment again. So hopefully I um, was able to communicate something. My plan until Coach Vic can get her channel up and running is to catch her off guard with questions about her life until it becomes so natural to her to be in front of the camera that she makes videos that you're going to love. I know that you're going to get as much out of her experiences as I have. I've learned way more that I've taught. Get out of bed and get up and move. And life is grand out there. Life is really good. You can make it as good as you want it. Even with COVID. But the most important co thing, Coach Vic, am I pretty? Very. <laughs> no, I'm no, not. No, he's just handsome. Oh! Well, wait till you see my new sunglasses when they come in. Yeah, I haven't seen them yet. <laughs> All right. 20 years almost right here. Girls, mm. you gotta find you a good man like him. I appreciate that, Coach Vic, I really do. But until next time, any words of wisdom before we wrap her up? Just don't chase me to the mailbox again because it gets very frustrating knowing I have to do like 20 pushes and he just goes whoop. Oh, we're doing it. Yeah. One day, she's gonna cry. I know it. <laughs> yeah, one day. <laughs> <laughs> but not today. Not today. So get up and go do something.